And Jeremy, we did this, and we dedicated our children. We dedicated our children years ago to the Lord. And you know, it's up to us as fellow believers to work with one another, lifting them up to the Lord, just we lift one another up to the Lord. Yeah. And you know, and, it, and it's great <laughs> that we can have our faith <coughs> so strong we want to dedicate our children to the Lord. So you see, he, did, he dedicated himself for us. Uh -huh. He did it. Right. Before we were born. Right. Before we came into the world, he had already dedicated his life to die for us that we too could have a relationship with him for eternity. And God, that's powerful stuff right there. Bro. It is. Right. And you know, we, we get the opportunity Come into his house to worship him, give him praise for all things. And you know what we do? We're very good about that. I feel the Holy Spirit you're talking about, Brother Mike. Yes. Every time I get near this church. Yes. But you see, one of the reasons is I feel that spirit is because that spirit is getting incited within me. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. The spirit gets excited. When we get around fellow believers, yes. we get around a house of praise, yes. the Holy Spirit gets excited in us. Yes. That others might feel that spirit. They might feel that excitement of serving Him. Yes. So, you know, uh, we got saved. You know, when I got saved at this very altar, it was the beginning. It wasn't the end. I asked the Lord to forgive me of my sins. Yes. And he did. Yes. Oh, and I felt such a load lift off of me. All that burden that I had been carrying. All this time, the yes. struggles that I had, I felt he lifted that off. Hallelujah. He said, give it to me. Yes. And he took it. And you know, I give him praise for that. Yes. But it was the beginning of my life, the rest of my life, serving him. And I struggled with it. But that responsibility, okay, now I've been forgiven, now what? And I thought, okay, I'm good. Oops. I didn't do good. I didn't serve him. I asked him to forgive me. And I thought that was all there was to it. But I had a pastor in this church at that time explain to me that that's not the end, it's but the beginning. But you're a new life, sir. And he preached sanctification. And he preached. And as the Nazarene believed, preached the second work of grace coming to us. Okay? And how is it important to our lives of serving the Lord? You know, I, I made a little outline here to help me follow through the track. Because that sanctification process helps us to repent from our sins. Not go back and relive what we just asked forgiveness for. Yes. Now guys, I don't know if you know, think that's important or not, but it is. When God forgives us, He don't want us to step back into that pit you were preaching about, brother. And fall back in there, sometimes we jump in it by ourselves. I did. Oh yeah. But you see, when I was reaching up to get out of it, he was already reaching down to lift me yeah. out of that. Yeah. Lift me out of that life of sin, living for the world. He wanted me. He had already chosen me. Amen. He chose every one of us Amen. to live for him. He wants that relationship with us. Yeah. So guys, I dug through the scriptures when Brother Brett asked me to first deliver this message to the Bible study class. And last night we had four. <coughs> and we shared the, the message of uh, sanctification and some of the scriptures involved. But I want to save the best for the Sunday morning service. So I had some scriptures I held back. And we got to enjoy those. And, and the message the Lord gave through me. So today he asked me if I would share that same message for our, our Sunday morning congregation. And I feel so privileged, Lord. But allow me to stand in front of you and give my testimony how to change my life yeah. 
And what He did through me, through sanctification of the Holy Spirit, that I can share that with you. That you too might feel the joy of yes. serving Christ. Amen. Our Savior. Our friend. Yes. Our advocate. He is always there for us. And I will probably fail you if you put your faith in me. Put your faith in him. To serve him every day of your life. Sister, if you put the first scripture up, you may already have it. It's, uh, it's in John 17. Those of you have your Bibles. And it's verse 17 through 19. Now I want to read this slowly. I want you to hear every word. Then sanctify them by the truth. Your word is true. Yes. Now these words I'm reading are written in red. If you know the significance of that, that is Jesus speaking to the disciples. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is true. As you sent me into the world. He's talking to the Bible. I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Amen. Amen. Now, when he's talking about sanctification, does everybody here understand what sanctification really means? If not, I'll tell you, it's setting apart from the world for God. Yes. Allowing ourselves to be changed to be set apart for God's work, for God's service, His glory, instead of the world. Now guys, He did that. He said, I sanctify myself that you too may be sanctified. But He calls us to be disciples, calls us to be His children, and He did. All of those of us that are saved, He expects us to be a whole person, to live for Him. Now, if we have stumped our toe along the way, and we have slipped or fallen, as many of us have, then we must ask forgiveness again. Please, Lord, forgive me, for I have failed. It's just that simple because He already knows our heart. But if we're sincere about serving the Lord and making Him our home, and being an effective witness for Him, telling others of what He's done for us, then we must live what we set out to do. And that's to be holy for our Lord and Savior. Now the next scripture is Acts 20, 32. This one I found very important. Not just because it had the word sanctification in it. Because here Paul Telling the churches. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Okay? If we expect to receive an inheritance from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, then we must become sanctified. He said it in his word. We must become holy. We must be set apart to do His work, His will. And may that Holy Spirit within us lead, guide, and direct us and give us the strength to serve Him. Guys, this is doable. This is attainable because God says He sanctified Himself so that we might be sanctified holy. He did that for us. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He said, when I leave you, the Comforter will come. He will be there to come you through your times of despair, through all the struggles that you have. The Comforter will be there. He is with me. He is with you. Guys, if we ever intend to make heaven our home for eternity, we must turn away from the world, allow ourselves to be set apart Make that change in your life. Make that commitment. We commit our children to God. Yes. We commit our buildings to God. Yes. Our homes. Uh -huh. What about ourselves? 
That's the message. We have more. Acts 26, verse 17 and 18. These words also are written in red. Christ said, I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may, be, they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. <coughs> now what's he telling us? He wants us to turn from darkness to light. He is the light, by the way. And from the power of Satan to God. Now we can do that by the working of the Holy Spirit. Working within us. And that's the only way we're going to do it, guys. Allow God to lead us. Through His Spirit. Our daily lives living for Him. So that we can receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith. We are saved by grace. Yes. And we live by faith. Amen. Faith in Him. Not in me, not in the pastor, not somebody else. Our faith needs to be in Christ. Yes. Oh, what a Savior. What a Savior. Who knew us before we were born. Who chose us before we ever came into this world yes. to have a relationship with right Him, to be His, to be His church, to be His bride? Yes. Guys, do you feel the importance of living for Him? There's more. How about Romans 15, verse 15 and 16? I have written you quite boldly. This is Paul again to the Roman church. I have written you quite boldly on some points as if to remind you of them again because of the grace God gave me to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles. Hey, that's us, guys. With the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God so that the Gentiles might become an offering. What about the next word? Acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit, that we might be acceptable to God the Father. Oh, God says, no sin will intervene to my heaven. No, not one. Daily, we must ask forgiveness. Yes. Because we mess up even when we don't want to, but we don't intend to. Yes. The Apostle Paul said that. I do what I don't want to do, and I don't do what I'm supposed to do. Right. And sometimes we get caught up in that. But there is hope. It is in Him. Yes. Ask for forgiveness. I say, Lord, please give me strength to serve you. Help me another day. And do this one day at a time, guys. Don't pray for a whole week or a whole year. Lord, help me today. Give yes. me the strength I need today to serve you. Amen. And not the world. The world is trying to trick us. There are so many forms of media, exposure we're exposed to, our children are exposed to, it scares me to death. And I'm telling you, I might appear a little shaky, but I'm so excited about the opportunity to deliver this message because I fear the wrath of God. I fear the wrath of God if I don't serve Him. Yes. I know what the outcome is. Yes. It's eternal hell. Amen. Torment. Yes. I don't want to go through that. I want to serve Him. I want to dedicate my life to Christ. Amen. I do not want to serve Satan or this world. Amen. Lord, if you take me today, take me today. May I be with you. Because I can't stand what the outcome will be if I don't serve you. And I, I have to. I'm afraid of the outcome. We must all fear the outcome if we don't serve God. If we don't put Him first in our life, and if we don't share that message with all those around us, we pray for our loved ones, please find the Holy Spirit. Please find that conviction in your heart.
heart to serve Christ, to ask him for forgiveness. We all pray for unsaved loved ones. Guys, are we living the kind of life that would be an inspiration to them? To want to serve a God that they cannot see, that only we tell them about, but then we don't live it? Is that the inspiration for giving? Oh. It's important. Our lives must be our witness. Yes. And if we are led by the Holy Spirit, we are sanctified holy, we will live that life. Mm -hmm. People will see Christ in us. Yes. They'll see the change that has taken place. Do you see the importance of living a holy life? Amen. Amen. There's no 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. That to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. When we call upon the Lord, we're praying to Him for an answer to our problems. But He calls upon us to serve Him. Do we answer that call? We say, Lord, I love you. I praise you. And he says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. That's right. If you love me, you will live for me. And allow me to live in you. That your life might be a witness of what I have done for you. Guys, do you see the importance of living a holy life? Do you see the importance of allowing Christ to work in us through His wonderful Spirit? Oh, He came with a purpose to this earth that we might have salvation. He knew this from the beginning, that He would be the sacrifice for our sins. That we could never be good enough. We can't be good enough today to make it without the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us. My prayer is that my church will serve God. Yes. We'll put Him first in our heart and life. That this building will be just but a building that we invite the community in and they come because they feel Christ. Yes. They feel the love. They feel the Holy Spirit and they want that. Amen. They have a yearning in their heart. When I was living in sin, I had a yearning in my heart for happiness that I couldn't find. Uh -huh. I tried everything. I couldn't find that happiness right. <laughs> until I received the Lord and Savior Amen. into my life. Woo! Then I found the happiness. Yeah. I found the peace. Yes. And it was only through Him. Yes. But guys, we must serve Him and we feel that joy every day. I feel it every day. Amen. Oh yes. Brother, when you said the Holy Spirit's here, yeah, He's here. Amen. Yeah. In us. He's in us. Amen. When we all get up in here, Holy Spirit is full oh, of in this house. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. all right. So not talking because yes. he, we share one with another. We share that love. I feel love but in this room. It's overwhelming. Yes. And that's what it's about. Yes. Sharing what he's given us. He's given us his love. Oh, See, there's more. Yeah. There's more. Jesus. First Thessalonians 4.13. Oh, excuse me, 4 3. In the end. <laughs> Tell you what, guys, this, this is uh, so good of stuff that I couldn't wait. I, I worked with it all week and the week before, <laughs> and uh, I just asked God to help me convey the message to my brothers and sisters that He wants you to have, that He wants you to feel this morning, and it's not about me. I feel privileged that you're just using me just as an old lead pencil. Okay? And I use that phrase a lot. I want to use this old lead pencil. And it don't matter if I'm an eraser or not. You know? He's my eraser. Yes. He erased my past. Yes. <laughs> Give me new hope. Woo. Give me life. Yes. Show me the way. Thank you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, 
that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Yes. Amen. It's up to us to live our life for him. And to avoid these things of the world, no matter what we see on TV, no matter what we see on the computer, no matter what we hear on the radio or read in the newspapers, that don't really pertain to us, does it? Because we are set apart yes. from the world. These are things going on in the world, but it don't have to go on inside us. Yes, we're here, we're living in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. Right. Be separate, be different. Yes. Be Christ. He tells us to be through His Spirit. People can see us, see Him in us. They want more of that. They we got more. First Thessalonians 5:23. May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we talk about we're going to ride, and we sing that song, and we wear our shirts. Uh, Amen. Are we truly going to ride with Him? Yes. Well, I'll tell you who, who is. Those that are sanctified, holy, yes. those that are living their lives daily for Him, yes. are going to be mounted on those horses and ride with Christ. Yes. When He comes yes. back in that eastern sky, and that's what the Scriptures say, when He comes back, come back about halfway, guys, we all meet Him in the air. Yes. Those of us that are sanctified, He has prepared a place for us. Yes. And we get to reign with Him forever. Does anybody in here want that? Does anybody want that? Eternity. 
Now, I'm a little old man. It's hard for me to imagine next week. But eternity is a long, long time. And I want that. So I want to ask a question. I have a question. Do we see the importance yet of being sanctified? Do we feel that need to serve Christ every day of our life? Yes. Not just on Sunday, not just come up here and have wonderful fellowship with our fellow Jews, and then go out and do whatever. It's not acceptable. Yes. To God. Yes. And will we be found blameless? I don't think so. Only if we accept Him. And allow His Spirit to work in us and ask Him, please, Father, cleanse us from that bad, evil stuff. Cleanse us with your Spirit. Make us sanctified holy. For Lord, I know you are holy. I want to be like you. To be blameless. To be blameless, we can be that effective witness for Christ. The people will see Christ in us and the things we say and things we do. The acts of kindness. Thanks for sharing that thing. That's a wonderful experience. And I hope all of us had a wonderful experience by sharing that kindness. <coughs> that one act of kindness. Let that be the seed to open our eyes and understanding we need to be like that every day. Be kind to one another. Show love to one another. They don't have to be a member of this church. They don't have to be, we even know them or not. Be kind to people. Show love. Yes. And that's what Christ did. Yes. And if we're to be his disciples, if we're to be sanctified holy, we're going to show love to people that don't deserve it. Amen. I didn't deserve it. Yet people prayed for me downstairs in the sun's room. Oh. They prayed for me that didn't know me. Oh. They prayed for my safety. I came home and I found my name written on a wall. The people been praying for me that didn't even know me. Amen. 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 That's right. But I came through those doors and I sat in the back right there and I couldn't wait to find all those prayers. <laughs> Give my life to the Lord. <laughs> God, I said, yeah, that power to pray for those that need the Lord. Amen. Be kind to them that don't even know you. Because What's that saying? What would Jesus do? Right. Just exactly what he did. As a matter of fact, he wouldn't die on the cross for those who hated him. Those that beat him. Those that stabbed him in the side. He died for them too. To place the crown of thorn upon his head. Mocked him. Ridiculed him. That's our Savior. That's how much he loves us. Do we love him in return? Guys, there's more Philippians 4.13. I want to share this with you. It's actually, I want to share it. Verse 12 too. Woo. I've got five of you. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. This is all about he was in prison at the time, in a Roman prison, changed to a Roman guard. He says, I have learned to be content with whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether welfare or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Here it is. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Now, who is he talking about? Our Savior? Yes. Jesus Christ? The yes. one that lives in us? Yes. We can do all things in him who gives me strength. Uh, God, that's where we get our strength. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. Christ said, when I go, I don't leave you alone. I will send that company to be with you forever. Yes. That's the more I want to read. This is out of 1 Peter. I don't know if any of you saw the sign out front. They come from 1 Peter. Chapter 1, verse 16. And it says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Now guys, God is serious about that. That's right. He said he has an inheritance 
for those who are missing by He has a place prepared for those who live for Him. I want to share this with you. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance or than when we lived in the world. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy for, because I am holy. Yes. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, we will all be judged by the way. Yes. For our actions, for our work. Did we truly live for Christ? Did we really love him? When we said we love him, then we serve him. We will be judged. Live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. Live our lives in fear of the wrath of God if we do not serve him. It's real, guys. Just as his love is real, his wrath is real too. His desire is for not does not send anyone to hell. We choose to not serve Him and go there willingly. Right. Think about that. For you know it was not the perishable thing such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed out to you from your forefathers. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead, and glorified him, so your faith and hope are in God. Know that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers. Love one another deeply, from the heart, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and their glory is like the flowers of the field, but the grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever. Amen. This word stands forever. Yes. His word is true. His word is real, guys. And what did he say to us? Be ye holy, for I am holy. He wants us to live our life like he is right beside us. Knowing everything we do or say, he knows. He feels it. May His Spirit rejoice in you. May you feel that power of the Holy Spirit want to serve Him every day. Guys, yes. it's important. Yes. If you want to make heaven your home, you've got to live for it. Yes. Don't fool yourself. Don't try to fool your friends and your neighbors. Oh yeah, I'm a Christian. Then go out and live like the devil. Oh. You can't walk with the Lord and hold hands with the devil. You can't yeah. have both ways. Amen. You can't straddle the fence. You can't straddle the fence long enough. Preach it. You've got to choose a side. That's right. Who will you serve today? That's right. I don't give you an example. I think most folks have seen some of the praying hands. You've seen pictures. You've seen this depicted. This is our will. This is God's will. And when they come together, they form a relationship. Yes. The power of prayer. Yes. Guys, don't live like this. Yes. Don't let God pull away from you. Yes. He is there. Ask Him to forgive you today. Ask Him to come into your life and give you the strength that you need yes. to serve Him. Yes. Ask him to come on.